Uh, it's not really that worth it, worthwhile to run a toolbox on the E75. It depends on, I mean, you should be running ideally a uh, Vents, a Rammer, and a Vertical Stabilizer. Alrighty, so uh, roughly the same comp, uh, big arties, slowish tank, which is not uh, ideal. Oh man, I can't, I can't do my minimap zoom. So sad, so reliant upon it. Um, so ideally, you want to start at least heading out towards this town area, um, usually by going up the A line in a in a slow tank like the the T54 Proto. And on your way out there, you're basically looking and seeing what your team does. You do have a lot of, of reasonably fast tanks that can get up there, um, so you want to see how that turns out. And then it's always important, like as we sort of emphasize in the stream, like 30 to 60 seconds into the game, you want to look and see you know, where your team is going and what they're doing. Unfortunately, I cannot blow up the minimap, but it looks like most of your mediums are headed towards the hill. So you do want to follow up this path uh, going up here so that you can at least be able to support them. Your uh, T-54 lightweight's doing a loop, which is never a good sign. You have a bunch of guys still in the base, which is also not good, especially since they're your heavy tanks. Playing either base is not really that useful, just because uh, it's very, very easy to defend these caps from the outside of the base. So you almost want to bait them onto the cap, just so you can kill them. And you do have a good number of your tanks in front of you, so you want to be sure that you can get forward with them and, and help them out. They've got those three top tier mediums that you're going to have to contend with, or that they're going to have to contend with. You don't really want to play down here so much. This isn't really that useful of a position, just because anybody that pushes over here isn't going to be that useful, because it's not like they can get shot on anybody. So like where this uh, T-49 is at, it's not really that useful of a position. And it's a little bit risky to just drive in here. Um, it is very easy for you to get shot in this area. You want to be careful about how high you go on this hill here, because you're going to start giving your guys back there shots on you. And the other assumption that you're making by taking this ground is that you are going to win the hill, because if you don't win the hill, then those guys are essentially above and behind you. But it looks like you guys are doing looks like you guys are doing okay up there, so. What you don't want to do is, is hang out in this area. If you're going to come over here, you might as well go all the way to this side, because once you get on this side, you're safe. But it's the same thing as, as like T49 coming across to this side. Him being over here doesn't really do anything for his team. He's not really lighting anybody. He's not really shooting anybody. Similarly, you being right there doesn't do a whole lot for your team unless you push forward there. So like that excursion to get the T49, while it worked out really well for you in terms of the trade, um, was far more of a far more of a risk than it was probably necessary for a guy that wasn't going to be key to their team winning that side. Like, uh, it almost would have been, like, if they sent more to the hill, you would have been needed on the hill. Uh, it would have been a much higher priority for you than that T-49. But that's fine. And they're sort of pushing across the field. You do want to be able to get into that... Uh, you want to deal with their guys right there, and not necessarily by pushing over onto them, although they are a little bit split now. You do have numbers here. Um, like, see where this medium is over here. As you start coming down this line, especially if you see where this guy is at, this means that you can basically take up underneath here, and you can get to this position. Once you get to this position, you can shoot back at those guys pretty easily, um, because they're in that sort of no man's land there. And then you want to stay close to the windmill here to protect yourself from artillery. Not quite where this uh, Pershing is at. Like where he is now is okay. What you don't want to do is there's this little gap between the windmill and this house that um, artillery can hit through. And if I know that I'm going to lose the windmill, I always get into a position where I can shoot down through there. So you're basically in that window there. 
So you gotta be careful. Watching this cat likes to pull in front. It's good shooting otherwise. Your guy's behind them, which is good. That was one of the RD. And you've lost the base, so that's something to keep an eye on. You know that there's a guy in the middle there, but he's not that much of a concern. There's a big rock there. You're actually probably better off going back now, because the, the T-54 Proto is a little bit of a slow tank, so you sometimes want to start pre-planning, because you know you've lost the field side. You know that like this guy is not going to be long for this world. Probably. So you, like, you want to be able to clear through this field area, and start heading back through either this side of here, or, or at least be in this area here, so you can shoot back at the base. Oh, that's good. They still have one more artillery. You're still probably better off going back to the base again. Uh, so much of, of the game is, is pre-planning just for what your team is doing, what the enemy team is doing. And if you're in a slower tank, that means you need to make those decisions that much earlier. So this shouldn't be too bad. You should be able to get set up to get these guys here. And then you don't want to be too far back. Like if, as long as you're not lit, you're okay where you're at. But once you get lit, you actually want to move forward rather than backwards. Because you don't want to get shot by those guys down there. And it's also going to overexpose you to it. But if he's going to let you shoot him in the face, then continue to shoot him in the face. And then you still want to be able to clear out this side, though. I wouldn't worry quite as much about these guys over here. Always want to try to clear that, that base area as soon as you can. It looks like they drove through. They didn't get on the cab, so that's something to keep in mind. And again, you got to be careful crossing through here because see that JC potentially shoots you. And apparently the Roomba is still in their base, so that's good to know. So you want to get on this low ground here and come through underneath. You don't want to sit out on this plane because the Roomba is still going to be able to hit you there. And you want to deal with your base. I wouldn't worry too much about this JT88. JT, JT oh no, it's a full JT. It's a big JT. I mean, you do have a little bit of time, so you don't have to worry about it and you're not lit. So I guess that's fine. You do need to sneak up underneath here, though. He's going to be on the left side of the cap. Like, right on the other side of that bush right there. Most likely. So, you, yeah. I don't know, you're doing a little bit too much dilly-dallying. I mean, you, all you have to do is just drive up there and shoot him. You're not going to be any safer back here. Um, if anything, you're going to be more at risk just because the Roomba is going to be able to shoot you. So just drive up there. You got plenty of time to do it. You still just drive up there. The Roomba, the Roomba shot you in the ass. And again, that's the, sort of the danger of staying up there. And that's why you got to identify where the enemies are. Like you got shot by that Roomba earlier, and so you know that he's over in that, uh, over in this area, over here, someplace. Like your uh, medium tank is about to light there, Roomba. And so their artillery just fired at you, so you've got a little bit of a window here. So you just go ahead and bully. What you actually want to do is just angle your, yeah, your front plate the other way. You got about another 10 seconds before the artillery is going to be loaded. You want to shoot the, uh, the moots. Take your time and get that shot. You almost shot the little building there. Okay, I was fine. It's not that big of a deal. Good job. You still want to move a little bit more forward now at this point. You want to be 
you actually want to be you actually want to be in this bush right here. You don't want to be where you're at right now because you can get hit by Artie really easily right now. You should be less afraid of those guys and more afraid of artillery. You should still be less afraid of these guys and more afraid of artillery. Although hopefully artillery will shoot your T95. behind this house and you didn't cover all it. Oh, it looks like they shot at the All right, no, that's fine. And then all you really want to do is at least start to come back over in this area over here. Uh, the Roomba, if he's uh, still in that, I wasn't paying attention what happened to your medium tank. I'm guessing he lost to the Roomba. Um, but the Roomba was, was over here someplace. So he's either going to come across the field or he's going to go back into this area right there. You don't really know where the WZ-120 is right now. Um, but I would actually probably take a peek through this bush this bush over here, if, if they're not there, I would actually go up on this hill to cover your artillery. Lols. So that, was, that wasn't too bad. Um, so a, a, a couple of things, I think you wasted a lot of time with that, that T-49. Um, that was pretty in, in a pretty inconsequential position. You probably could have just left him there, and that was a lot of risk to you, even though you didn't take a lot of damage. Um, so that's that's fine. Unfortunately, you have a T95 who a little too campy, but that will happen. Um, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, um, you guys actually cleaned up on the hill pretty well. Um, I, I felt like you could have come back earlier and cleared off your cap and that maybe would have kept some of, of your base defenders like you had a tank destroyer that was uh, actually I think it was a T95 that was over here um, you could have gotten uh, more lights for him and that's really a situation where you know you just have to be aware that that Roomba is in a position where he can shoot you if you're high on this plateau and you just stayed high on this on that hill there and that basically allowed that Roomba to shoot you twice uh, and that, that ended up being a big problem. Um, I think the Roomba got pretty much like all of your life's worth of damage because the third shot from the Roomba killed you. Um, so that's uh, that's certainly a, uh, an issue. So it's just just be aware of that. Lol, this T95. Anyhow, this is not going to end well. Kill have a hard time hitting anything. We'll skip the pleasantries. Alright, and so if we look at the stats... Yeah, you didn't get a whole lot out of your team, unfortunately. You did have, they did do well on the hill, they just didn't do well anywhere else. And the fact that your heavies never left your base um, was, was a huge, huge problem. Um, that's why they did so poorly. Well, I guess apparently they did push a thousand, actually. Uh, pretty good shooting, 28 of 32 is nice. Uh, the T-54 first prototype is not a super accurate tank, so that's pretty good. GG, nice try. All right, and the next one will be Sea uh, Dogs and his Tortoise. Sure, Schlitz. Um, remind me at the end. 
It's it's generally good as as soon as you can establish that you can make it across, you know, without being spotted. I hear the countdown, but I okay, there we go. Already. Uh roughly similar comps. And so generally uh, what I'll do, at least on the start and slow non turret to tank destroyers, is play through this middle area here, guard this lake so that if you're, any of your fast tanks go up in there, you can actually cover them and prevent them from being shot in the back. Because it's a really powerful position from this east side of this map that's play under, underneath there. What you don't want to do is drive back to this hill over here, especially in a slow tank destroyer. Uh, it's bad enough that you're not going to really get shots in the early game. Uh, you know, one of the things that we always talk about is you don't ever want to be in a position where you're waiting for the, your teammates to die in front of you before you actually um, can shoot them. And going back on this hill pretty much guarantees that you're not going to get any relevant, uh, anything relevant done early. So you also didn't send anybody up here, which is fine. Um, that's not a, a position that you actually need to play, but uh, you need to be aware of that because there's going to be a huge, huge vision gap there. You can send a lot of your guys down this way, and then so when you look at a dispersion like this, especially in a slow non turreted tank destroyer, right? If you're you're not going to get a shot on anything that these guys face. You're not really going to get a shot on anything that these guys face. So if you're waiting for these guys, this is most of your team there. If these guys die. Right, and you're still waiting to get shots, then that's a huge problem, right? But if they win and they've got a huge number there, then you've still got no shots. So either outcome, when you do the outcome analysis, either these guys win and you don't get any shots, or they all die and you've already lost half of your team before you get any shots. Like both of those are bad scenarios for you, right? And what's what's the only other way that something can work out for you? If they all come around this way, unspotted, until the very end, and your team stays alive. That's the only outcome that's p potentially good for you. And I don't think that that's going to be the, uh, the issue here. And then, so again, we'll, we'll keep an eye on the time, and we'll keep an eye on the team. Right, so it's been two minutes into the game. You, uh, you don't even have a sniff. Not a sniff of a shot. And so your 1390 died out here, which is fine. He was a little bit overextended. You don't necessarily want to hang out up there. You don't have a whole lot of intel about where their team is because your team really didn't leave the map, right? So if you look at map control, you, you have map control of about a quarter of the map, and they get, they get three quarters for free. Um, so they can do whatever they want in that, in that range. And so the problem is, is that you're going to just be waiting here for a while. Uh, it's almost three minutes into the game and you still don't have a sniff. Let's, let's speed this up a little, shall we? Oh, there you go. Okay. Three minutes and you got your first shot on these guys that, are, that, are, that pushed over into this area. Just a little bit, right? Um, so you got one shot there, and then they, they backed off. Um, but the, the biggest problem is, like, see where this guy is at right there? He gets better shots on these guys than, than pushing through that area there, and you can't actually cover that. Uh, in the meantime, like, this guy is getting shots on the, the backs uh, on these guys, like, right here. And your team is slowly melting. And there is a big, a big issue, because... Oh no, even the, uh, I'm so, so not used to not having, being able to use my mini-map soon. Um, so you want to, oops, I accidentally paused it. Uh, so you still want to be able to look and see uh, uh, where what your team is doing in terms of moving around. So it seems most likely that they're going to push over in this area here. So you're about to get some shots. Unfortunately, they're about to completely obliterate your middle there. Did set them on fire. Unfortunately, 
you've lost about half of the health on your team. And these guys are going to start getting backdoored here. So you actually, at, at this point, again, you sat too far back. But at this point, right, this medium has cleared out this lane. You actually want to push forward over here. Not so far forward that it'll be easy for them to flank you. But but I, I maybe to like this road area, let's say. But just enough so that you can actually help these guys. Because these guys are about to start getting fired upon. Actually, I guess technically you can help them now. If, the, if they sit in that little window. They're moving the back door of the rest of your team. We didn't penetrate their armor. Well, take your time with your shots, make sure make them Target count. You've only got these small Target windows unlocked. within which you can possibly shoot. So make sure that you, you make those shots count. Your medium is headed into their backfield, so that can potentially take down the artillery. This is even a better position now than what you were in, but it looks like your medium in town is going to die. Unfortunately, your artillery is also dead. You actually probably want to counter push this at this point, um, because you've got this wind- Oh, look, he was able to kill that tank store, so maybe he was able to kill that as well. But you actually want to try to keep these guys alive right here. It, it should be the paramount importance right now. Okay, so now, this is this is interesting. Now, the best place in the map for you to play is H9. So, there is that. You don't want to sit there though, because artillery can shoot you where you're at. So you want to, you want to move. But you want to force them to come up into you at this point. You need to get that a shot of damage as they roll up through this area here. So you want to be back on this hill, like ideally on this side, right about over here. So you want to push forward, not back. You want to use this building as cover. And you actually want to get out away from the position that you're in while you're not lit. Like what you don't want to do is sit in one area because that gives them a... They can tee off on you. You're better off shooting the... Oh. You don't want to back up too much because you're not sure where the E5 is. He might still be over on that other line. Got it. Everybody out. Okay. All right. So uh, a, a number of problems. I mean, your your team didn't live very long, but you didn't really help them out very much at all. So going back to this H9 area here, and this is what we always say um, in the stream is that 
<clears throat> you don't ever want to be so far back that you're waiting for the guys in front of you to die before you get shot. Um, you want to be in a position where you can, uh, if, if somebody tries to shoot your, your guys or somebody's engaging with your team, where you can actually trade fire, where you can actually be, be relevant. Um, and sitting back in this H9 area, especially at the start, isn't super helpful. Uh, you can make the argument that once you lose this edge, you can back up o over here right and and get yourself safe which is potentially what you what these guys should have done that were up here right or drive down to where those heavies were like both of those things could have could have been manageable um but you were just too far back for for too long and uh, especially at the end you could see very very much like when you had your heavy, your two heavies over here and their mediums knew where you were all they were doing was just sitting behind these houses where you couldn't shoot them and so all you could do was watch and all you could do is just watch while your team died uh, and that's that's always a bad position to be in. Uh, you you want to be uh, close enough where you can actually give them some sort of, of support or vice versa where they can actually support you as well. All right, so if we look at the stats. Well, your team didn't do too badly. I mean, you'd like to get a little bit more out of your 10s than that, but that'll happen. You did well. I mean, the tortoise gun is, is really amazing, which is why the F... I'm not sure why people didn't like the FE-215B, because it's the same gun as on the tortoise, uh, just on a, on a turret, on a reasonably mobile platform with a lot of health. But um, anyways, uh, the tortoise gun is, is not the problem here. Uh, I think the biggest problem here was just that too much of your team died before you actually used the tortoise gun. Um, and that's that's always a big problem, and that's a problem that people have with tank destroyers in general, and these slower tank destroyers uh, specifically. Uh, you just don't want to get caught too far back. I, I'd much rather be, you know, right next to those heavies where you know the enemy team can't flank me very easily because I have my teammates there. But I, I'm still going to be, you know, my gun's going to be in the game, and your, your gun just wasn't in the game early enough. I'm not saying that 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 would have made the difference, um, but it certainly couldn't have couldn't have hurt. So that's something to, something to keep in mind when you play those uh, slow non turreted tank destroyers or, or tank destroyers in general. Just don't don't be caught too far back. Don't be caught being a spectator while your team either wins the game or loses the game without you. You know you want to have a say in the outcome of the game. GG though, nice try. Man, more tank destroyer play. All right, so next would be Unbreakable's Waffle. No, I mean, I don't think that it's about fault per se. I mean, I think it's about identifying, hey, this is where I could have done something differently and it might have changed the outcome of the game. And understanding that there's a difference between getting a high score or a high damage game and doing something that actually wins the team the game. Like, if you look back to that game that we played earlier tonight on um, uh, Malinovka, right, our... our high tiers pushing the zero line made a huge difference in the game. They might not have have had great stats for the game, but them moving up that zero line and being aggressive on that zero line opened up everything else on the map for us and allowed us to win that game easily. So it's not a glamorous, but you gotta do what it takes to win. That's what's important. That's what's important. You gotta identify what that is. Okay, so you're taking your walk when you're going west, which eh. I'm not a real big fan of. Uh, you gotta look and see what your team is doing because the waffle is not a, a, a very good tank to, to trade with people. Uh, frontally, you you always want to be a, a sniping ideally, and so that means you gotta have somebody in front of you to do some spotting. 
So we'll see what your team does. And I know a lot of waffles like going to this position. I find this position the easiest place on the map to shoot waffles. Uh, so I, I don't necessarily recommend it. People go, oh look, there's a bush here. It's gonna it's gonna save me. It's, it's really good. And so you always gotta keep an eye on what's going on on the other side of the map. I think you're what is that? Type 4 heavy. Still on his way. And so your guys are moving forward, so you're moving forward as well. That is good. Like, see, as, as that E100 moves forward, you can actually probably just move up with him. Because basically, if he pops around that corner and there's something there, you want to be able to pop out around that corner and flip it. Because he's, he's just as big and just as bad camo as you, right? And then you want to just clip this Tiger 2. And what you want to do is you want to push forward here so that you don't get hit by their artillery. That's fine. So this is a good play. I, I like this. You should actually probably get shots onto the side of that C95. All right. And then what you want to do is you actually want to back up into this area right here because you can still get hit by artillery where you're at. Well, at now you know where he's at. And the reason why I like to shoot the more armored tanks is that these guys are going to struggle with that T95 because you can own it. So you know where their artillery is at. So that's that's a huge plus because then you can push through this lane right here and still be safe from that artillery. Unfortunately, see how you still got a bunch of guys back here? That's a bad sign, because it's basically just you and this E100 up here. So you're about to be clipped, so you should already uh, be thinking about how to get yourself in a position to deal damage. Right? You're going to be protected from that, that SU, no matter where you go, but if you drive down to like about where that bush is, you can get side shots and clip out that T95. You want to be able to do that before your guys die. Like this, uh, this T30, not that big of a deal. He's he's not what's holding back your team. And you still can push forward here because if you push forward, you will be already safe. Just in the nick of time. No, forward, forward. He just hit behind you. <laughs> And see where that 5051 is? That's good. His position, he can hit the T95. You guys are all being held up by one tank. One tank. Alright. So you're going back, and that's fine. I, I don't have any problem with, with you going back. I'm just saying that you could have freed up this side very easily by just clipping out that T95. You always want to identify what's what's the biggest problem for your team. And when you're in a tank like the Waffle uh, with 276 base pan, you, you, you are a problem remover. So you want to use that clip to just, just wreck See how they mostly moved across here? You actually probably want to reload, right? Because look at, look at where their tanks are already. And then you can run away now because you're the ISO tank. Luckily, they're not putting cap pressure on you, which gives you a chance. And then you just have to play Ring Around the Rosie with this guy. Unfortunately, 
this, so your team is now dying. And that's sort of the problem with the waffle. It's got great burst, but it doesn't really have very much sustain. You want to just push this E100 at this point. He's going to get a free shot on you, so you just got to hope that he doesn't high roll you, and then you cook him out. Like, that's that's the, the only chance that you have. You want to do it as quickly as you can, though. When you know that you need to make every shot in a clip count, and, and you know, like, it, it wasn't a question, right? You know that you needed to trade a shot from that guy. Like, he was going to get to shoot you once. You just needed to hope that he didn't high roll that. And so, if that's the case, just go ahead and take the hit. Take the hit, but make every shot count, and that guy's dead. Because now, you can't trade another shot, right? There, you don't have that same option. Now you just have to hope that he uh, he blows it. Yeah, you don't need to auto in. He's got all the advantages here. All he has to do is wait. And so this was a huge, huge mistake, unfortunately. I'm not sure if you could have gotten there. I'm not sure if you could have gotten there in time if you killed that guy, but it would have been close. Uh, and all you would have had to do is just sit up on this hill right here and you could snipe those guys as they tried to push your, your boy. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a situation where understand what the what's required going in. You had plenty of time to think about that. You knew how much health he had, right? Because you saw him coming across. You knew that you've got five shots right and it takes you know whatever seven and a half seconds to you know six seconds to get those five shots out so that that means he's gonna get a shot on you you've got enough health to to take a hit as long as he doesn't like get a really high roll so go into that thinking to yourself okay i'm gonna get shot here but i'm gonna clip this guy out and if i clip this guy out it gives us a chance if i don't if i'm not able to clip us out we probably don't have a very good chance but if i clip them out then we do have a chance because those guys are too far away to race over and and, and kill you before you are reloaded right and that gives you a chance to get to get back at them um, so just just make sure that you're aware of those those numbers ahead of time and the other big thing that i saw i, I thought you actually played this this really well um, in terms of being aggressive um, I thought you did all the right things. When you saw your E100 pushing forward, you didn't sit back and watch him and go, okay, well, let's see what he runs into. You actually followed him up there, and that's what, absolutely what you need to do. It's not like he's in a very fast tank either. It's not like he's in a tank with a lot of camo. It's not like he's in a small tank. You know, he's in a big-ass tank just like you. He's not, you know, they're not going to miss him coming in. Um, so you want to be up in his general area so that when he pushes in there as you pushed across there that was i thought that that was a good move the the big mistake that i felt like you made there was that you need to identify what the biggest problem for your team is on that side and as a waffle you have to take it upon yourself to remove that obstacle for your team um, and in that particular case it was at t95 and you had a situation where you had a partial side shot on him and you really could have just driven forward and shot him in the side and clipped him out and that would have made a huge difference to your team your team was uh, other than the e100 most of your team was still camped back here which is a problem but i mean it's a pub. That's that's what's going to happen in pubs. Um, and so I, I felt like if, if you were able to take out that T95, that would have made a huge difference um, for, your, for your E100 and for your team in general. Because they spent a lot of time not damaging that guy. That E100, that T95 didn't die until your 50-51 actually drove around behind him and shot him. Um, and so that's something to, that you always want to think about when you're playing a, a tank like the Waffle. That you, you're, you should be the problem solver. Um, and uh, and make sure that you just take those tanks out just be like oh hey look there's a full health t95 blocking my team ah not anymore 
right? That should be the, the sort of outlet. Um, and so I, I thought that was the biggest, like, sort of early game mistake is just not identifying that guy as, okay, this guy's going to be a problem for our team. Um, and then, again, just at the end, against that E100, just take that shot. Just I, I don't care if you have to drive straight up into him and he shoots you in the face. If he, if he doesn't high roll you, then you need to clip him out. Um, and, and you need to, you need to understand that going into that. It wasn't like you didn't know where he was. It wasn't like you didn't know how much health he had. It was, you knew exactly how much health he had. You know exactly how much health you had. You knew that you had the possibility of clipping him out. Um, you just needed to make all those shots count. Alrighty, so if we look at the stats, that's a pretty good game. You didn't get a whole lot out of your team. Your E100 did well. I mean, he was aggressive. He didn't die right away, which is always excellent. They they actually bounced him a lot, which helped. Um, you, you need to be a little bit uh, more aware about artillery angles uh, in the waffle, like where that SU-14-2 was. You need, needed to push a little bit more forward to be artillery safe from him, uh, especially in a tank like a waffle that's so susceptible to artillery fire because it's got it's rather large and doesn't have any armor in the turret, so pretty much anything that hits the turret is going to pen it. Um, so you need to be aware of those angles. And when you know where the artillery is, because that artillery was lit for like most of the game, when you know where the artillery is, there's no excuse for you to not be already safe. Um, otherwise, I, again, I thought you played that pretty well. Um, it, I don't think that you suffered from uh, the right amount. Uh, I, I think you had the right amount of aggression there. Uh, I think that target selection and patience were all the difference between you know winning and losing this game. Um, and and those are minor things that you can that you can fix. So, GG, nice try.